Okay, so we're still on learning objective one, but now we are on step three, determining the transaction price. And we also throw in the allocation step and the recognizing step for no extra charge. Okay, so um, the example that, um, they use a couple of examples. I'll start with the first one. This is the Bean Coffee Company again. They offer the incentive to um, buy a bag of coffee beans that usually cost $10, but on Tuesday you can buy it for 9 Okay, so um, you, there is a contract with the customer. You can, I, there's uh, only one performance obligation here. That's the bag of beans. Um, the, to determine the transaction price, you have to think about it's the amount of money that you expect to receive in exchange for what you're giving up. So the transaction price, even though the usual one is this, on Tuesday, this is your transaction price. And so that is, it's going to be determined by what the company actually expects to receive when they sell the stuff. Um, so we don't have to allocate it because there's only one performance obligation and you would recognize the revenue uh, when it happened, okay? So this is similar to things like uh, accounting has always ignored the list price or advertised price. It starts out with the exchange price paid. And so this would be the exchange price paid. It's the consideration that the company expects to receive. So nine bucks is the answer to the first part. Okay, then they do offer a $2 discount on a $3 coffee. Okay, in other words, you're gonna pay a buck for the coffee. Uh, when you buy, a $12 bag of beans. All right. So here is where we have to allocate that based on the standalone selling price of the coffee and the beans. So the beans ordinarily cost 12, the coffee costs three. So the standalone price, what you'd sell each of them separately for, would be 15 bucks. So you do the, you, you get the percentages involved. So you do 12 divided by 15, the beans make up 80% of that, 3 divided by 15, 20%, the coffee makes up 20%. You multiply that by what the customer is actually going to pay, which is the uh, two, which is going to be 3 minus 2, a buck for the coffee, plus the beans, $13. Um, and so you go the 0.80% times 13, 1040 would be allocated to the beans, 260 to the coffee for a total um, tra transaction price of the 13. And so, assuming the customer picked up both of these at the same time, which would be logical, you would re recognize both performance obligations um, when the customer received them. Okay, so um, you're going to recognize the revenue when each performance obligation is satisfied. Um, and just to review a little bit on that, when is it satisfied? It's when there's a change in control. So the, the uh, customer has control when uh, Bean has the right for payment. It could be when legal title is transferred or the physical possession. The customer now has physical possession. Um, the customer enjoys the substantial risks and rewards and the customer has accepted the asset. In this case, the coffee and beans. Okay. So um, that wraps up learning objective one, and we'll move on to um, learning objective two, which gets into a lot of the more complex issues associated with revenue recognition.